When you think of polygraph examinations, crime probably comes to mind, but the tests are actually being used to fish out potential cheaters in a Connecticut-based bluefish tournament. So is the test fair? Some local fishermen don't think so. NBC Connecticut responds. Consumer reporter Caitlin Birchall tackles this story for us. So where were you fishing? This was my rod holder right here. Tim Valley reeled in this 15.18 pound bluefish months ago. I was feeling very lucky. But it's a moment he and his fishing buddies from the Waterbury Deep Sea Fishing Club will never forget. Kevin was fishing to my left, Rick was fishing to my right. The club chartered the Tartan II out of Niantic to compete in the greatest bluefish tournament on earth in August. It's a decades old contest drawing thousands of anglers into the Long Island Sound on a summer weekend. It's a tournament that Valley's boat captain has participated in for decades. We were so excited to finally get a win because we've been go I've been doing this tournament since I was a little kid. Valley's catch on the Tartan II put him in second place on the leaderboard, but his bragging rights and dreams of a $7,500 prize did not last long. It was almost two weeks later when I got a letter that says I was disqualified. The rules state first, second, and third prize winners are required to take and pass a polygraph test. Valley failed the test. Benny Sheen's in the same boat. The Long Islander failed the polygraph too, disqualifying him from winning $25,000 for first place. Sheen caught this more than 20 pound fish aboard his friend's boat. From the get go, people didn't believe it just because it was a very large fish. Anyone could have caught that fish. During the greatest bluefish tournament on earth, local tackle shops must verify the weight and condition of the fishermen's catches. But then there's the lie detector test. Both men say they weren't told any other reason for their disqualifications other than learning they failed the exam. Connoisseur Media's radio group runs the fishing tournament and says we take great pride in upholding the rules that govern the competition, which includes catching fish within the specified time frames and within clearly defined boundaries. The captains of the boats that Valley and Sheen were on say both men legitimately reeled in their big catches in bounds. We have it on video, the pictures, everything. He gets disqualified. I run the boat. I told him the position where we caught the fish. That we have all, everybody in the boat witnessed the, the, the catch, you know, and for some reason he failed the lie detector test. I don't understand how it's even possible. Connoisseur Media says it's a well-established tradition to polygraph top potential winners. Do you think that's a good way to find a cheater? No, I don't. If I were in their shoes, I'd challenge that. I mean, I wouldn't accept that. Charles Morgan studies the detection of deception. He's a forensic psychiatrist and a former CIA intelligence officer. The polygrapher is going to interpret any anxiety reaction as a sign of lying. The problem with that kind of a test is that you have lots of chances to look guilty when you're not. And that's why results of these tests are not admissible as evidence in court in Connecticut. You're telling other people, yeah, I'm a dishonest person, and you've used an, a non-scientific, an invalid scientific device. It's like, who wants to be called a liar when you know you were doing the right thing, you know? What do my children think? They think I was lying? It casts doubt on my integrity. The administrator of their polygraph tests, Lisa Ribikoff, says whatever the validity in court, it's part of tournament rules to use polygraphs to verify results. If someone doesn't pass the test, tournament organizers told NBC Connecticut Responds that they provide them with every opportunity to retake it before their deadline. But in emails provided to us by Valley, he asked to retest multiple times, but was told he couldn't contest his results. It's a little fish cheap, to be honest, how they didn't offer him a second one. Sheen was offered a second chance, but just couldn't coordinate it with tournament organizers by their deadline. He and the polygraph examiner told us the scheduling of the tests was disorganized. Connoisseur Media's radio group says the clarity of our rules has contributed to very few issues. But both anglers we spoke to swear they're not spinning fishtails. Catching the fish seems to be the easy part. Passing that polygraph test is the hard part. Because of their disqualifications, the third and fourth place finishers on the leaderboard ended up first and second place winners. Tournament organizers tell us they have full confidence that these anglers adhered to all the rules. The Waterbury Deep Sea Fishing Club is adamant Valley did too. They won't compete in the tournament again. For NBC Connecticut Response, I'm consumer reporter Caitlin Burchell.